Yes, good morning. It is day 52. We have started the third trimester of this real estate thing already. Goodness gracious, we're in our last five weeks of class and we have entered airy season. It's wartime. It's wartime. Have you assembled your team? Are you in your soul tribe set up to wage war during airy season? Whew. I could feel it. Energetically, I could feel it. I could feel it. Oh, the full moon was the other night. Um, where are my weirdos at? Yes. It is time to eat, my friends. It's time to eat. It's time to stop pulling your punches. We've entered airy season. Have you been pulling your punches with your life? Have you been pulling your punches? Have you been talking yourself out of things that are good for you because you are scared of entering the battlefield? Right? It's time now. It's put up or shut up time. It's war season. Airy season is upon us. Are you ready to go? Are you ready to go? This is exciting. Okay, it is the third trimester, which means that we are entering a new book. We are starting the legal aspects of real estate. Real estate law, understanding the court system. The real estate exists. And we're not going to talk about any of that crap today. Just like I told the last class. This, this, this last trimester is all of the real estate law, legal stuff. We're not going to really get into a whole hell of a lot, a lot of that. There are going to be certain times that I'm going to take a moment to kind of reset the class a little bit. I'm going to tell you, if this is your day one, that is fine. There are 51 more days already on YouTube ready for you to get started. Um, every 18 days, you can take a test, which means that you don't have to take this whole time out of your schedule in order to fill up this thing that you feel like you have to, oh, well, it's day 52, so I only get to you know, crank out one of these a day. If you want to just knock it out, get logged up at calpaces.com, put in that discount code 6106, start rocking and rolling, get the days ticking, and understand that you can earn commission now. You do not have to wait. And isn't it a great time to be thinking about a career in real estate in French Valley? Because you don't have to be licensed to be a professional. You don't have to be licensed to earn commission. It's chapter eight of real estate principles. Look it up if you don't understand it. If you're watching this and you're a hater, and good morning, haters, we've got some of those. Go ahead and look it up. Read your book. Read the book that you were supposed to read when you got signed up with this damn thing. Chapter eight, real estate principles, goes into the real estate finder program, which gives people an opportunity to earn commission when they are unlicensed, which eliminates that gap from Day one, I'm interested in getting a real estate license and, you know, getting paid to day six months later, day 180, when you finally get your license. Instead, if you are about that commission life, if you are about sales, if you are about creating ownership in something, something we preach so often, you so often hear real estate agents talk about ownership. Like, man, you got to own, you got to own your house. What are you doing paying off somebody else's house? What are you doing paying off somebody else's business? What are you doing not creating ownership for yourself in something? And that's really what we've got going on at the Serpentine. You guys saw, maybe some of you didn't see it, but you've heard about it, what we did the first time. You saw what we were able to build the first time and how we did it. Well, I learned a lot. <laughs> and this time we're going to do it a little bit differently. We're going to include a lot of the same things that we enjoy. But we're really mixing it up. We're going to shake it up. We're giving people ownership. you got to be licensed to get that ownership. But we're, getting, we're eliminating that barrier of entry to when you get paid. We're supporting people. We're creating a collaborative environment. Nobody washes a rental car. So what happens if we all own it? What happens if we own the building? Go ahead, lean on it. Go ahead, get that key. Go ahead, you know, start setting up your network. If your network will determine your net worth, what are we doing hanging out with a bunch of other real estate agents all the time? So if you're tired of cold calling these garbage online leads, Help us build this community. Help us be a part of the Serpentine. Jump in. It's one of those things where it's like, if you are willing to jump in, create some ownership in something, 
get your training, get your feet wet. And then if you want to start your own team at eXp Realty, fantastic. I support you. If you want to continue to stay here because the systems that you have been a part of building are so good that you can't imagine leaving, then fantastic. We'll support you. If you don't want to do this full time, but you want to do this in transition, or if you only want to sell six houses a year and you're content with that, we'll support you. This is not one of those situations where we're going to try to take a square peg and slam it into everything or make you know everybody try to slam through a round hole when at the end of the day, you might be a, you know, a hexagon, right? You might be a rhombus, you know, rhombus triangle, rhombus, is that a thing? I don't know, but you, you, why fit somebody else's mold? Why play in the orchestra when we're all set up to play jazz a little bit more naturally, right? So pick the chords, stop getting, letting somebody else talk you out of being an owner, come on over to the Serpa team, what this is, is instead of it being an interview like I am screening out and only interviewing a couple of different people, it's gang gang. It's war season, like I said. We're going to bring in a lot of different people. People are like, oh, David, I'm really nervous that I'm going to fail this disc test. Some people have even asked me, what else can I do? I'm like, hey, fill out a Myers-Briggs if you want. Bring that in. But what if I get it wrong? I'm an ESFJ. Is that okay? Is that acceptable? And I'm like, listen, this is more about honoring your design within these systems so that you are equipped to be a part of this machine, this tribe, this collective, this co-op of agents that is owning this team together. The Serpa team is going to be agent owned. It's going to be agent operated. We're going to be in it together, right? So if you want to be a part of it and you see something that you can do to help us create a new system or whatnot, or if you want to get your training and your mentorship, and we talked, Darren Campbell came on, sold $4 billion in real estate. He just did a, uh, a Zoom meeting for over 100 NFL players. And he said that in the first year of his, uh, he said he actually struggled for a few years. And then he went up to the most successful person in his office and he said, hey, if I give you 50% of my commission for the next year, will you mentor me? And he's like, yeah, but I'm an asshole. Or yeah, but, you know, I'm rough to deal with. Don't you realize that people don't like me? Because yeah, but you're successful. And if you mentor, he goes, well, you got to do everything that I say then. And the second that you don't do it, you're out. Well, we're not going to be so extreme like that. But at the end of the day, if you want some mentorship, then jump in. There's no reason why we can't figure this out together. Hey, Autism uh, Acceptance Month is coming up. I am autistic myself. Uh, there's a lot of uh, really beautiful people out there on the spectrum. Clearly, you know one of them. Um, Natasha, what if you have no real estate experience but are extremely interested? Come in, family. Come in. I've helped a lot of people that never sold real estate before. Or maybe they sold two homes over the course of a couple of years, become six-figure agents. In fact, at one point, my team had nine people, all 100% of us making over $100,000 a year, including my admin, Leslie Hill, my TC. Um, so um, I'm about honoring people. And if you're interested in real estate, I mean, we were a career that was declared essential when a lot of people were being put out of business by the government. And so the thing is, is if we can help you uh, create generational wealth. If we can help you and your family um, create some sort of ownership in something that's going to continue to yield results, um, I would be honored to be a part of that. So of course, I'm going to be honored to train you and help you be a part of that. Um, so when I started this real estate school, a lot of people told me, David Serpa, do not teach high school students. Are you crazy? And I said, yes, I'm crazy. <laughs> I'm passionate. You know what I mean? Like I love people. I love helping people. When I graduated from high school, I was homeless. Nobody was out there, uh, you know, sort of like betting on me. So what happens if you bet on somebody? Well, then you become the adult that you needed, right? I often say if my mom would have met me 28 years ago, how different my childhood would have been, right? So if, if you are watching this now, there's a reason why you're watching it. And so jump in. You are wanted. You are needed. Come in and be a part of this. Um, and, if, and of course, you can earn commission while you're learning. It's called the Finder Program. 25% commission, which out here at an average price point of $500,000 is $2,500 for the Finder. 25% for the team, 50% for the local licensed real estate professional that's closing out the deal. And then what that happens is it creates this tribal atmosphere. And of course, a tribe is a group of people that you would be compelled to share the last of your food with. 
and then we're hunting together, we're fishing together, we're in a situation where some of these young and inspiring people that are selling solar, some of these people that are in life shifts in their life where they're considering a new career, they're saying, you know what, I've been doing this for a while, but I've always thought about real estate, or I did real estate 15 years ago in Texas, and I never jumped back in California. Everyone's sort of coming together right now. And it's this like soul tribe kind of atmosphere where everybody is heavily invested in uh, this system, one another, each other. And when you have people invested in people, something beautiful happens. And I say often that people are our most undervalued resource on the planet. Uh, if we were to invest in people, what a beautiful thing would happen, right? Um, all right, uh, let's go ahead and get to these other questions. I own and operate a successful medical contracting business. And isn't that interesting, right? So a lot of people are successful. They have other businesses and they just sort of say, yeah, but do I have to do this full time on your schedule? And I'm like, no, let's figure out how to adapt this to your schedule. Your network will determine your net worth. So if you are already a part of a successful network, well, what do we do about putting a real estate license in your hand and then empowering you to then um, work with people that already know, like, and trust you? And then also, if it ends up being something that, uh, you know, how do we create systems so that you could then uh, further your ownership if you end up being really successful? Or you know what? Just do those 6 to 12 transactions a year, which is totally fantastic and acceptable and a lot of money and nothing to scoff at. What's your favorite thing about community? Oh, Stacy. Are you, she's always ready to paint nails and get started talking. I'm going to go and sip my coffee and I'll tell you my favorite thing about community. Mm. No, so, uh, so for me, I really enjoy celebrating people for what they're already passionate about. Uh, a lot of people come in here and they say, uh, I really love helping people already. I'm engaged in a nonprofit or, you know, I'm really uh, passionate about um, hip hop music or I'm really passionate about um, ending homelessness. And I'm like, okay. Fantastic. What do we do to facilitate that life? What do we do to make it so that you can uh, make enough money, uh, systematize yourself, uh, surround yourself by a group of people so that you can take the time that you need to do the things that you want to do while also doing the things that you need to do? And we sort of shy away from this community uh, with this sort of like hyper uh, sense of capitalism where we're like, you know, me. Dog eat dog. If you're not at the table, you're on the menu. And I'm sort of like, you know, why are we acting like that? Why are we creating an industry where 95% um, of the people fell in the first year and then over 80% of people don't make it out of their second year, right? That's unacceptable. So what happens if we created a system where if I put enough food on your table, will you help me eat, right? And so I'm going out and I'm finding people who are already comedians. In fact, they're actually coming to me. And Amy and I were talking about this. People are coming to me, to us, in the Women's Empowerment Group, through the Men of the Valley, through our network, and they're saying, I would like to do this. And I'm like, well, that's fantastic. And one of those people is uh, Johnny Herrera, of course, who is sold out back-to-back uh, -back comedy shows, had to add second shows yet again. And so um, I tell people, I don't want to silence anyone. I want to give you a stage and a microphone. I want to give you an opportunity to... Uh, Contribute in the way that you want to contribute. Uh, yesterday, we had a high school student who is the president of the Black Student Legion for Murrieta Valley, um, Felicia, and she was looking at the website. She's like, what? Who, who does your website? I was like, I do. She goes, oh. I was like, what does that mean? Oh. <laughs> what does that mean? No, but like, I know I'm 36 years old. It, it, like, there's a lot of things that I don't know how to do. Um, I know how to sort of like create systems, create teams. I know how to team lead, but then I also want to create other leaders within these systems or find people that just want to serve, right? Those SC personality types that are going to do better as a part of a collaboration than they're going to do on their own. So um, high school students um, are continue to absolutely blow my mind. Of course, we have uh, James and his dad, Fred, who are both licensed now with us. And... Um, Fred is a high school teacher, his son James is a high school senior, and now they are both running a, a father-son um, real estate team. So uh, we are each other's assets as people. I think it's interesting that we continue to have these billionaires reaching for Mars, but none of them reach for the impoverished communities like you know um, South Central, like East LA, like Hemet, like San Jacinto. 
Um, like how much of an impact could somebody uh, have with these sort of resources and yet look at what we're doing with them. And so um, we are each other's most important assets. I saw this thing the other day. It said <clears throat> the best way to cure burnout is not self-care in self-love. It's group care. It's group love, right? It's supporting one another. The best, like when I was going through burnout, um, you have to understand that when people are burning out, they need to be supported more than ever, right? Um, and I had a lot of people running away. Like I was like this Titanic sinking in the ocean. And so when you get to a level of burnout, you need to understand um, when people are burning out, sometimes, you know, being that person willing to rush into that burning building, right? And saying, hey, listen, why are you self-sabotaging? Can I help? You know what I mean? Like being an ear, listening, right? Like um, I can't tell you how many interviews I've had with people where, um, you know, I'm helping other people recruit and they start talking and, I, and then they'll say, oh, but you go ahead. And I'm like, no, listen, um, I want to listen. I want to hear more because until I find out who you are, I can't properly support you. And I can't properly utilize you to the best of your ability without taking advantage of you, right? So um, I keep hearing people say, this is the first time that I've had a recruiter listen to me. Normally, they just want to tell me what they're all about and get off the phone. And I'm like, we've got a lot of things to be about. If you sort of pick your thing, what are you about? How can you support this? So, um, And how can we support you? I love the comedians and open mic nights. Um, I haven't yet launched the open mic night. It's something that we have talked about, including a family uh, open mic night um, and a family talent show. Uh, in fact, um, you know, anyway, we're finalizing sort of like our, our schedule and we might see what we can do about getting that in there. Um, uh, to be in service to others. Um, absolutely, like what are we going to do with God's hands when they realize that they are our own? And, you know, if the kingdom of heaven is at hand, what are we going to do to shape it, right? And so when we look at being of service to others, it is, you know, I wrote this book called Zen Business, which is my favorite book of mine, and I've written four of them. Um, and it is the only one that I felt like was above my ability to deliver it because I, I was listening to other people. I was sort of channeling. I was being a vessel. And one of the things that I experienced was, um, you know, there's this nirvana state, which we talk about. In Nirvana, no, not the hair band or not the grunge band, but Nirvana. <sighs> I'm enough. I am good. I don't have to go on. In Christianity, um, in Judaism, it's sort of that experience of the Sabbath. It's, uh, <sighs> okay, all things are perfect. All things are good. I'm going to take the day to rest. In Christianity, it is realizing you are perfect in Christ and then that sort of second life of ascending, and then realizing that you are a direct portal, you're a vessel, you're an embodiment in service to others, right? And so when we experience nirvana, oh my gosh, I'm enough. The next stage of nirvana, I believe, is bodhicitta, which is the altruistic service of other sentient beings. So if we can serve others compassionately, and if we could give to others without the ask, if we could put food on their plate, we will eat, right? If somebody is cold, give them a blanket. If somebody is hungry, feed them, right? If somebody is looking for real estate, help them buy real estate, right? We overcomplicate these things and we make them about ego instead of making them about service. And so um, I'm really passionate about um, the Serpa team this time around and in fact, I didn't even want to call it the Serpa team. I just wanted to call it our community. But everybody got sort of on this like, hey, in order to be in compliance. And I'm like, okay, listen, if that's what it needs to be, then it will be the Serpa team. And then we'll just, you know, I will disappear into it. And then no one will really know who David Serpa is. <laughs> and we'll be a part of like this huge thing. And then everyone will constantly be wondering like, who's Serpa? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, like I really, I love what I'm doing. I'm sort of getting an opportunity to be almost like, a club promoter, right? right? Like I'm a networker, which is what I've always done. I'm a rainmaker. I am a chaos coordinator. All of these things that I got a chance to do with the Serpa team the first time, I am now getting a chance to do now a second time um, with a lot of new people uh, that I'm getting, uh, that I'm very excited to work with. So um, anyway, all of these wonderful things, all of these wonderful things, we are building a team, of course. 
uh, you're welcome to be a part of it. And if, what we said here is, uh, you know, become an owner on day one. And of course, that requires actually having a real estate license in order to be, become an owner with the XP. Um, you can't do that until you have a license. So that's sort of some incentive to work towards that will take, you know, three to six months, depending on your ability to get it done, whether or not the test sites remain open, et cetera, and so forth. Um, honor your design in a team environment. I believe that the natural working place for us is a tribe, is a community, is a uh, sort of a co-op, right? It's where everyone does what they can to the best of their abilities, to each their own, but then we all are sort of in a situation to where um, success becomes a byproduct of being a part of this tribe where food is plenty, right? Where we are eating. Abundance, abundance, abundance. Thank you, Amy. And in order to do that, we're really, we're anchoring into French Valley. And in fact, I've had people contact me about moving to French Valley in order to be a part of this team, which is very interesting for me. I've had people talk to me about, um, hey, listen, you know, I'm thinking I'm going to move my family out there. I really love what you're doing. I want to be a part of it. And uh, so recruiting is not going to be a problem. In fact, what we did last week was we said, um, it was the night before, the day before, and I said, I want to do a little like soft, you know, like team meeting with sort of like the people that are going to want to be a part of it, let people know that I'm hiring. And then we had over 30 people, almost 40 people. And it started from like this sort of like initial announcement. I was very humbled by that, that people want to be uh, genuinely, like I'm not saying that it's sort of like this word, you know, oh, I was very humbled. Like it meant a lot to me to have a lot of people walk in and say, I want to be a part of what you're doing. Um, and so I'm like, okay, this is about what we're doing. Like, how, how can we do this, right? And that's what was so beautiful about the team the first time is I was surrounded by a lot of beautiful people. I was surrounded by a lot of great people that were helping to create um, a really great thing. And I learned a lot from a lot of people. Um, so you create success by creating a successful network and then supporting your team within it. Uh, it's going to be all about uh, French Valley. Um, there are going to be opportunities to work the French Valley merchant market. I'm going to be working as our community um, and organizing that. And then we actually want an EXP table, a Serpa team table. Um, invite your clients to our Easter event this freaking Saturday from 11 to 2. Holy smokes. We've got an event coordinator uh, working at this time, Starina Star. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is the first time that I'm going to be showing up, and I almost am not totally sure what to expect. But I know there's going to be petting zoos. There's going to be train rides. There's going to be bounce houses. There's going to be a DJ face painting, a ring toss. It's going to be all sorts of really like uh, fun little things. Oh, look at this. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, look at that. So, and then on the back it says the egg sighting event features the Easter Bunny Run. The Easter Bunny Run? What's going to be happening with the Easter Bunny Run? Uh, train rides, jump houses, petting zoo, egg contest. And in fact, the photographer is coming by, I think maybe today or Thursday, because we're going to figure out how we're, we can walk people through and do the photos inside so that we've got kind of a nicer setup here. Um, local vendors, um, games, balloons. And this is not going to be something where a bunch of people are selling things. It's actually going to be something where people are doing nice things for people. There's going to be a dance contest. What? There's going to be a dance contest. I wonder if the Easter Bunny will show up for that too. Um, there's going to be raffles and prizes. And, and we actually have gift baskets already in the back. Um, there's going to be a live DJ. There won't be a dead DJ. He is a live one. There's not going to be a pre-recorded DJ. This DJ is live. <laughs> like a video of a recorded DJ. It's like saying, like, pre, you know, are we ready to have a good Easter event? All right. Photos with the Easter Bunny. Okay, cool. That's it. That's what we've got going on. So as part of, like, the Serpa team, we're going to, you know, work these events. We're going to go be a part of it. We're going to, you know, instead of going and knocking on somebody's door and saying, who do you know that needs to buy and sell real estate? Have you seen my newspaper ad? <laughs> We're going and saying, hey, uh, I don't know if you know, but we've got the seventh annual Easter extravaganza um, happening right here in the parking lot. It's a new location. It's not going to be uh, at the uh, Fieldview Park anymore over there by Adeline's Farm. It's going to be right here in uh, the Stater Brothers Shopping Center. 
So I want to make sure that you guys get a chance to you know check that out. Oh, by the way, are you leaving California? Tease for what we're working on. Little tease for what we're working on. Are you leaving California? You just got a little taste of it. But if you're part of the Serpa team, you're going to get the whole thing. You just got a little amuse bouche, a little sample. But are you leaving California? Hmm. Working on something new, Serpa? You bet your butt cheeks. In fact, it's not new. We've been working on it for a while. Okay, that's that. Any other questions? Let's check this thing out. Let's check the Zoom. Um, of course, like I said, we're getting into this last trimester of classes, so um, we're not necessarily going to be um, focused too heavily or intently, but if you took Friday's class, you took the last final um, instead of a Socratic discussion. That's what it said on the, uh, on the printout. And then so this Monday, uh, you know, we had our uh, conversation with uh, Scott Lemus about financial planning, um, which was absolutely fantastic. Um, Kate watched that one, um, and she loved it. He's been with the same company for, I think he said, 19 years, Pi America. That was on yesterday. Um, we've got a, another really great Socratic discussion scheduled for this Friday. We're going to talk about how you can financially benefit from the post-boomer boom. <laughs> $30 trillion is getting ready to change hands. The most money in American history. How can you benefit financially from it, right? Um, and... This is something that people are like, you know, listen, this is just the truth. So there was the boomer generation, the baby boom. Well, what happens, you know, later is everybody sort of ha owns all this real estate. There's all this wealth. And in fact, there was this really interesting study, and I wish that I remembered the exact statistic, but like 47% of the workforce is, uh, is millennials. And they own like less than 13% of the wealth. Um, and then the stats are even worse for Generation Z, of course. And so what happens when all of that wealth um, goes away because people pass away? Uh, well, 95% of wealth is inherited wealth is spent within the first five years. The first five years, 95% of inherited wealth is spent. So how can you help people sell real estate or be the name on the tip of people's tongues 10 years from now when this really starts because there's a lot of people already like sort of entering homes and things like that but there's a lot of this real estate that is going to just you know people are just going to contact the first person that they they see the first person that they think about so be tip of tongue be top of mind and if you are tip of tongue and top of mind when the time comes around you will put yourself in a financial situation to where you're not getting lucky, you are getting good, right? So we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, we appreciate you guys tuning in. I'm going to stick, stick around for just a moment here in the Zoom meeting just to make sure that if anybody has any questions that I am available to you. Um, of course, my number is right down there at the bottom. It's 951-691-7798. Will our community offer, um, let's see. Will our community offer more licensing classes? Uh, classes. So the idea beha behind our community is I would love to get a lender in here offering loan courses. I'd love to get a financial planner in here wanting to create more financial planners. And so I did this initial real estate class. It has all been pre-recorded. Or it's all been recorded. So it's all going to be there forever. So then that way what can happen is in the future, people that want to teach a real estate class that have a real estate license so that they can answer the questions that they need to answer. Just have to sort of like gather people and then play the video on YouTube to like a room of people or they can teach their own class. But I'm hoping that this sort of, uh, this idea catches on and then people just sort of, you know, keep going with it. Because um, I want to create new systems for more people. And the truth is, is you can actually, I've learned a lot about this, that it doesn't have to necessarily be stretched out over 15 weeks. We can sort of create these crash courses that are 54 days long. Yeah, well, 54 day long because every 18 days you take a test, and so what happens is you say, "Hey, listen, we're gonna we're gonna start a real estate uh, advanced crash course or whatever, and then we're going to knock out everything in 54 days, right? And then that way you're getting all three of the tests done because that's what people want. They want sort of that like community, like we're doing this together, like we're doing the test together, we're collaborating together. So um, I have a lot of ideas. But I'm also sort of like, once I've created the idea, I want to fire myself. 
I want somebody to step in and you know be like, oh well, this is a great idea. Um, I can help people do this. I would love to have a local licensed real estate professional teaching in every high school in America, and in every community center in in America, like teaching people how to become licensed in real estate, so that everyone who graduates from high school is getting either a job offer, a certificate from a training program, or a license, right? Because then we're preparing for Generation Z to enter the market. But right now, we're not preparing Generation Z for doing a whole hell of a lot of anything other than, you know, like people say, oh, gen generation, oh, people are so lazy. I'm like, you know, no, you know, who, you know who believes in the younger generation? You know who believes in people at the bottom, people who are poor, uh, are, you know, disenchanted and disenfranchised with the system? Um, the federal government, um, the, the military industrial complex banks on the fact that they are going to be able to employ people. You know, we've been at war for 19 years. I served in Afghanistan. Amy served in Iraq. I would really love to be in a situation where our top export is not violence, where we're starting to serve, you know, figure these things out. And I, I've told a lot of high school teachers, I would love to out recruit every Marine Corps recruiter in America. Every time that there's a booth with a pull-up bar, so people jump down off that pull-up bar. You don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to do pull-ups. You could sell real estate. You could be licensed in loans. You could get a medical uh, license that in six months that will enable you to get a job in a market that's, you know, the medical industry that's not going anywhere. So, um, so the truth is, is I want other people to step in and teach these things, which is why they're recorded. Um, I want to put a trail of breadcrumbs for other people to follow so that then they could come in and decide, oh, you know what? That's how it's done. It's not scary. Oh, you know what? I'm actually, so I've, I've talked to like Palm Springs Unified School District, um, the, uh, the career counselor out there. And he's like, you could develop a high school course and then you could have your agents get credentialed, a specific credential, and then they're getting paid to go into the high school course, in the high schools, teaching during class hours, and then the school actually pay for people to get certified or to get licensed or whatnot. Or you could do an after school program, but either way, the, then the teacher is getting paid. So there's a lot of different ways to do it. There's a lot of different ways to skin a cat, uh, or there's a lot of different ways across the river, right? And so um, I'm hoping that other people will sort of pick this up, but it is not too late for you. In fact, we've got. Um, what is it? We've got five more weeks of class. So um, five more weeks is 35 days. So uh, you start rocking and rolling with us at the end. Um, you sort of jump in. And in fact, you don't even really need to do 90% of this stuff. Like we tell people all the time, watch the Monday class because it is a special guest instructor. It's everything that we wish that we learned during real estate school. Watch the Friday class because it's a Socratic discussion. It's teaching you to interact uh, you know, with your business intelligently. And then look at the titles for the class and decide which ones you want to watch. But once you have enrolled in real estate principles, set your alarm for 18 days in your phone so that you know when to test. And you could forget about it. You could never study anything because when your alarm goes off your phone, you'll simply open up the PDF version of the class that you got through first Tuesday through calplaces.com. And then you will be able to look up the answers to the questions because it's open book and it's at home. So the first three tests that you take every 18 days, day 18, day 36, day 54, are open book. They are online. You can take the test at home in your pajamas, right? And then you've got your state test that you mail off for. Um, so you get your three certificates every 18 days. You mail off for the state test. You take a crash course through somebody like Stuart Jacobson with Real Estate Exam Study Group. Um, and you just sort of like brush up your knowledge, you do all your studying, you take your test, you brain dump 90% of that stuff because you'll never use it again. And then you figure out what you actually need to do to get paid. But in the interim, like, let's say you want to get, start working right now. I tell people, like, people are like, Hey, listen, I'm waiting to get licensed. or I'm waiting to do it. You could start hitting your phone book now. Hey, listen, I am a real estate, uh, student. Uh, and of course, I am a finder, right? So, hey, what's been up? How are you? What's going on? Hey, I just want to let you know it is week, you know, what is this week? Week 11 of this real estate course that I'm taking. And it is a requirement that we've got to call everybody in our phone book or we've got to require, all, you know, whatever. And I just want to see, how are you? Of course, what have you been up, up to? How's everybody? And then make it real. 
Amy says, make it raw, real, authentic, and warm. How are you? Oh, I'm so glad to hear that, X, Y, and Z. Um, I do want to let you know, of course, the reason for the phone call, but I'm so glad that we got a chance to talk. Um, I am a real estate student now. I'm starting a new career field. I'm really excited about it. And if you know anyone who is either leaving the state of California or anyone who needs to buy and sell real estate, the only place where you can do this is in California. So if you're watching in Texas, you can't do this. But if you're in California, you can legally be paid commission now. So you generate that lead, you send it out to us, to Kate, 951-349-8047. Uh, she has the initial phone call with them. She partners them up with a uh, local licensed real estate professional on our team locally, and then where they're going, or in Sacramento and in Idaho. And then do you know what happens? You get paid twice. If they're relocating, you get paid twice. If it's local, two people on our team get paid 50% each, you get paid 25% both times, and then the Serpa team gets paid 25% both times. So I wanna figure out how to work smarter, not harder. I also wanna figure out how to help people uh, start this career right away, instead of it becoming something that they get to do eventually, right? Okay, cool. All right, everybody, I'm gonna take off right now because commission boot camp starts in three minutes from somewhere, and I wanna be able to let Zach have the feed. Um, all right, everybody, have a good one. Adios. And, uh...